Have you ever wondered how shocks work on an RC car? It's pretty similar to the full size, but it's a little different. So let's talk about it today. There's a few core concepts to the shocks that come on an RC car. We have the springs, we have the shock body, we have this shaft right here, and there's a piston inside. What actually controls how they function is the spring rate of your spring. That's the hardness. So uh, let's say something that has twice the spring rate is going to take twice the amount of force to compress it for the same distance. So let's say 10 pounds for one inch or 20 pounds for one inch. The 20 pounder has twice the spring rate. We also have preload. On these shocks, you can see here there's this collar and the shock body is threaded and I can thread this collar down and increase our preload of it. Now this doesn't increase our spring rate of the spring, but it does increase how much it takes to get the shock going, at least at first. Then we have on the inside oil. This oil can be different thicknesses or viscosities. And then there's a piston on the inside. And the piston has different size holes that can be drilled in them. I'm not sure if these particular shocks have different pistons that you can get, but there are a lot of tuning kits for various shocks out there. So those are the various ways that you can tune a shock. And of course, we could get deeper into it by changing the size or the length of the shock. So let's talk about those points. On this particular rig, it is built a little different than a normal SCX-10, and the weight of it is probably going to be lighter than the stock unit because it doesn't have the big body and there's all kinds of things that are missing. So if this was heavier, we would increase our preload by screwing these down. But since it's lighter, we really can't go any lighter on this particular rig. The reason why you would want to go lighter or heavier is to make sure that when your rig is put down on the ground, I typically want to go for between 10 and 30% preload. So we don't want it fully extended to where nothing is working when it hits the ground, but we want it to sag a little bit. That sag gives you a little bit of variation on the terrain without it being fully locked out totally. Maybe y'all have a little bit different experience on this, or maybe you like your rig to perform a certain way. And I must say that a lot of shock tuning is actually personal preference, because if you know how your rig is going to respond, then you know how your rig is going to respond. But somebody else may want their rig to respond differently. So maybe I want some slow moving shocks that are kind of stiff. Maybe somebody else wants them really loose and fast. So if we're going to continue with the tuning, let's say, I feel like it's just, it, it, it's too easy to actuate. That's when our spring rate is gonna come into play. And I'm not sure what these stock ones are. They've got a red, uh, a little red dye, a little red paint at the top of them indicating that they are a certain spring rate. It's on that one somewhere. If I wanted it to be stiffer and not articulate so easily, that is when we would increase our spring rate. If I feel like it's, just not doing enough, then we could decrease our spring rate then and tune it in that regards. This one, it, it gets to lock out and lifts up. We really can't go any further. So I don't feel like I need to change the spring rate on this particular one. Going further into the oils, when you get into a high viscosity oil, the shocks are going to respond slower on both compression and rebound. So as you can see, when I push this one down, it doesn't spring back immediately. It kind of comes up slowly. If you have a shock that is too slow, when you start going over terrain and bumps, it ends up packing down and your suspension can actually lock out and not do much work. But at the same time, if it is too fast, when you go over bumps, it'll unsettle the rig. So it's kind of a fine line. And honestly, I'm not really good at tuning shocks. So it, again, it's something that's going to be personal preference for you. Your terrain, your driving style, your driving speed in a crawler, all these things matter. How much weight you have on the outside versus the inside of the rig, all these things actually change it. So a lot of times you just start with stock and you tune from there. I haven't changed the fluid in these yet. I haven't changed the pistons in these yet. So it just kind of is what it is. It's a it mostly stock setup. But if I want some tuning changes, we can. The last thing is the pistons. And the pistons have little holes in them or they have like a, a cut out on the side where the fluid goes past them. Really fancy ones are actually uh, what would you call them? Like a two part to where when you compress them, 
it'll be like this and then when you decompress them they'll open up and they'll actually move more fluid through them so you can have a really slow pack rate and then a really fast decompress rate that's more for racing honestly but it is something that's out there so something you should be aware of and if you do a lot of racing you're going to be a lot better at shock tuning than i am i'm sure and i would love to hear your secrets on that so between the size of the holes in the pistons or how much fluid they let pass them the oil weight that we use the viscosity of it the preload that we put on our springs and then the actual weight of the springs that is the four ways that you can actually tune a shock and again on this one i haven't done any work to it and i'm not really the best person to talk about the, the perfect of tuning but it is a basic that goes to pretty much all rc vehicles all these shocks work the same and it is something that i should probably get into so if you do have any tips on there i would love to hear them but the way that this one's set up for the weight that it is it seems pretty good you know one thing that i could do if there is torque twist you know so uh, let's say i'm going up an incline and this side likes to pull up you can add a little bit more tension on the back side i really wouldn't want to change the weight of my spring but you could add some more tension to keep it from torque twisting but that's kind of a band-aid in my opinion there's a lot of things that you can do to the shocks to band-aid over bad suspension geometry and i'm not really into that so if i was having problems with torque twist what i would do is try to address why that's happening in the first place and that's going to be center of gravity that's going to be roll center stuff that we can cover in another video and i have covered in the past so that is the basics of shocks they have oil in them they have pistons that let that oil pass by they have springs and you can change the spring rate and you can change your spring preload on there but this rig honestly isn't bad you know i wouldn't mind it if it had a little bit more sag in it but it's already maxed out at the top so if anything i would go to a lower weight spring maybe in the front but then i'm going to have more torque twist so it's always going to be a fine balance yeah so maybe if one of y'all have one of these rigs you tell me what you've done to these to the suspension or if you find that the stock suspension is actually really good which i wouldn't be surprised if it is because axial racing they do a pretty good job on designing and this isn't their first rodeo so no this isn't theirs but the rest of it is so if you do have any questions leave them down below and either me or another expert in the comments is going to get to it as always thanks for tuning in have a great day